where the joint SpaceX and NASA teams will make their final call for Dragon to depart station. We also have a question for you. We are seeing in the centerline camera this dark. Is there a light vestibule that we should be that we should have on, or is that uh, not normal for undock? Stand by, Dragon. We're checking. You just heard some conversations between teams here on the ground and the crew aboard the Crew Dragon vehicle as they are configuring the big loop. And that is where a centralized communications can take place between the crew on Space Station as well as on Dragon, as um, along with the flight controllers here in Houston and in Hawthorne, California. Again, we're and awaiting- Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for camera config. Dragon, that is expected. Uh, once we start pulling back the umbilicals, Dragon has some steps to enable the lighting and, and confirm the cameras are in the right config. Thank you. Again, we're awaiting undocking and we'll be looking ahead to the go no go poll for undocking here in a few minutes. And this is the poll where the joint SpaceX and NASA teams can make their final call for Dragon to depart station. This is one of many checkpoints in the return that will continue all the way up until just before the deorbit burn. And it gives mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown site and make sure everything is lining up before Dragon departs. Freedom SpaceX on the big loop. Ground is go for undocking and departure. The undock sequence start is 1415 Zulu. Please confirm that you are ready and that your visors are down. Since getting the hatches closed earlier this it's morning, the Axiom Mission 3 crew. Down, we are built on dock. Good news, SpaceX copies. And we just heard confirmation that the crew is go for undocking. Separation of the Dragon vehicle from the space station is set for approximately 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Pacific, just a few minutes from now. At the moment, Dragon is in its final configuration before undocking, and we are waiting for mission operators to conduct their go-no-go no -go poll and whether to move forward with this procedure. Just like during its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board. The undock command is scheduled to be sent at 8.15 a.m. Central, 6.15 a.m. Pacific to begin that autonomous sequence, which takes about four and a half minutes. While it's been a busy morning here in Mission Control Houston in anticipation of undocking, the Axiom Mission 3 crew has also been busy on board station today in the past few days preparing for their return home. Over the last few days, the astronauts have worked to pack Dragon full of cargo for the return experiments, some hardware, and other items. All of this cargo will get offloaded after we get the crew out following splashdown, and the scientific samples will be sent to researchers for final analysis. The crew also took time to get their SpaceX suits unpacked and ready for the journey home. And after the crew got suited up this morning in their launch and entry suits, the hatch was closed at 6.25 a.m. Central Time, 4.25 a.m. Pacific, and depressurization of the vestibule occurred. The vestibule is the area between the Dragon hatch and the APAS hatch on station. This depressurization process lasted about an hour to bring the vestibule down to vacuum in preparation of Dragon's departure.
teams also configured the Big Loop, which is an integrated communications loop with NASA's mission control team here in Houston, SpaceX's mission control team in Hawthorne, the crew on board the International Space Station, and the Axiom Mission 3 crew currently inside Dragon. This Big Loop allows for fully integrated communications with Dragon Freedom as the crew undocks and makes its way back to Earth. As we continue to stand by for the go, no go poll for undocking, we can check in with the team at SpaceX and Axiom in Hawthorne. Thanks, Anna. As Dragon awaits separation from the space station, let's properly introduce the AX-3 crew. The commander of AX-3, Michael Lopez Alegria, a dual citizen of the US and Spain, is no stranger to Axiom missions, Crew Dragon, or the space station. AX-3 marks his sixth mission to space, having completed three space shuttle flights and a Soyuz mission as a NASA astronaut prior to commanding AX-1 with Axiom Space. And today, when not in low Earth orbit, MLA serves as Axiom Space's chief astronaut. From the country of Italy, our pilot is Walter Villade, and this has marked his inaugural trip to low Earth orbit. Villade serves as the head of the Italian Air Force's representative office in the United States. He has completed cosmonaut training as a flight engineer, participated in multiple analog training missions, and flown a variety of aircraft and missions in, as an active flight engineer in the Italian Air Force. And our third crew member from Turkey, Mission Specialist Alper Izarauci is the first Turkish astronaut in space. With 15 years of experience in a myriad of aircraft for the Turkish Air Force, Izarauci got his start in the Air Force Academy in Istanbul, Turkey, and earned a master's degree from the U.S. Air Force Institute of Technology. Additionally, he served a number of years as a commercial airline captain. And finally, from Sweden, we have Mission Specialist Marcus Want. In November of 2022, Marcus was selected by the European Space Agency as an astronaut reserve. However, with the AX-3 mission, he becomes the first project astronaut in ESA's history, a new designation within their ranks. Together, this crew represents the first all-European commercial mission to the ISS. And their efforts on this mission really continue to show what can be accomplished in low Earth orbit through the efforts of private industry. Right, so as Dragon awaits separation from the space station, let's share a bit about the teams who are working to bring this crew home. SpaceX Mission Control, which you can see there on your screen, is based at our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. That's where our teams monitor Dragon and are checking in on all of its systems. To help make sure that the crew has a safe journey, our team in Mission Control will be monitoring the progress along the way, uh, their entire journey back home. On console or headset are six key positions who are monitoring the health of the vehicle and crew. The mission director responsible for Dragon operations is in charge in the room. The person that you'll hear talking to the astronauts is the crew operations and resources engineer, or what we call the core. The other positions are focused on vehicle systems like navigation and control, avionics, software, propulsion, life support, and communications with ground segments. And on the Axiom side, Axiom Mission Control Center, based in Houston, Texas, that you can see there on your right, is where ground teams have been facilitating and coordinating all aspects of this mission as the crew lived and worked aboard the International Space Station. Also known as MCCA, this control center has been staffed by a flight control team 24 hours a day for the entire duration of this mission. From, facil from facilitating payloads integration between crew and principal investigators to actively scheduling and even stowage operations, each flight controller is responsible for... And at the head of this flight control team is the Axiom Operations Lead, also known as Axel, and they serve as the primary interface to the MCCH Flight Director at Johnson Space Center. Umbilical D-mate is complete and nominal. And with those And with those undocking and umbilical DMA calls, we'll toss it now over to Anna at Johnson Space Center in Houston. 
Thanks, John. Yeah, we just heard confirmation that the undocking sequence has begun, and it began at 8.15 a.m. Central, 6.15 a.m. Pacific. This undocking sequence is fully autonomous, and the first step of that is the umbilicals retracting, which we heard the call up just a second ago. Following the retraction of the umbilical, the first set of hooks, that's six of the 12 total hooks, will begin to retract. The first set of six hooks are, are beginning to retract. After those have retracted, the second set of six hooks will retract. Following that, there will be two quick um, undock burns to physically separate Dragon from the station. This physical separation is scheduled to take place at 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Eastern in just about three minutes. fully execute to begin the physical separation from station. Again, the umbilical has already retracted, and we are standing by for confirmation that the first set of six hooks have retracted. First set of hooks are open and nominal. On to the second set. And there we have it. We just heard a call up to the crew that the first set of six hooks are fully open and it was a nominal retraction and now they are working on the second set of six hooks. After this second set of six hooks is fully retracted, Dragon will be ready to depart from the station and begin pushing itself further and further away by using its thrusters. Physical separation is plan for two minutes from now at 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Pacific, and Dragon's initial departure from station is a little different than other docked vehicles like the Soyuz that rely on springs to push them away from the docking port. Dragon will actually execute two short thruster firings called undock burns to physically separate using a combination of the 12 Draco engines around the base of the capsule, with the first breaking any stiction between Dragon and the docking port, and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away from the space station. We are about one minute away from physical separation and four minutes into the undocking command. All hooks are open. And we just heard confirmation that the second set of six hooks is open and that will separate, begin to separate Dragon from the space station as we see those thrusters firing. Separation was confirmed at 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Pacific. Again, separation of Dragon Freedom from the space station was confirmed at 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Pacific, while the International Space Station flew over the South Pacific Ocean west of Ecuador. Dragon has started to push itself away from the station and with Burn zero is complete and nominal. Space 
And with that, Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, Pilot Walter Villade, and Mission Specialist Alper Gezeracci and Marcus Want have completed their mission aboard the International Space Station and are making their journey home. We've had good undocking burns to physically separate from the space station, and we'll have several departure burns coming up. We'll continue to monitor Crew Dragon through the departure sequence as it makes its way home from the International Space Station. The first of the four departure burns, known as Depart Burn Zero, has already taken place, and this is a short firing of Dragon's Draco thrusters that lasted approximately 16 seconds to increase the speed that Dragon is flying away from the station and send it on a trajectory, taking it up around the orbiting laboratory. We are now about three and a half minutes from the next departure burn, known as Departure Burn One. Departure burn one, which is scheduled for approximately 6.26 a.m. Pacific, 8.26 a.m. Central Time, will increase the initial opening rate between Crew Dragon and the space station. This burn will last approximately 21 seconds uh, long and will further the distance between Dragon Freedom and the space station. The Axiom Mission 3 crew spent about 18 days docked to the International Space Station, and during their stay, they were accompanied by the Expedition 70 crew, which remains on board following Axiom Mission 3's departure. Expedition 70 is made up of NASA astronauts Jasmine McBelly and Laurel O'Hara, ESA or European Space Agency astronaut Andy Mogensen, and JAXA or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, along with Roscosmos cosmonauts Konstantin Borisov, Oleg Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub. The next crew to launch the station is Crew 8, which is scheduled to launch later this month, and Crew 7 will return a short time later after a brief handover period. We are now about a minute and a half away from departure burn one. On your screen right now, you're seeing live views of Dragon as it makes its way to back to Earth and is departing the International Space Station. And we're now in a brief but expected handover between satellites. This is known as a LOS or loss of signal. We'll get signal back in just a few moments. We are under 30 seconds away from departure burn one. Again, this burn is scheduled to last approximately 21 seconds and will increase the initial opening rate between Crew Dragon and the space station. Following this burn, the crew will start to take off their spacesuits until it's time to deorbit. And we just heard confirmation that departure burn one is in progress. Following this departure burn one, the Crew Dragon will exit the keep out sphere. 
the keep out and spheres. Dragon, SpaceX depart burn one is complete and nominal. We hope you guys had a wonderful time on the station and we're looking forward to seeing your smiling faces in person. As a reminder, ground will deactivate the big loop following the approach ellipsoid exit, which is coming up soon. Be all that, Siva, and uh, to our gracious and endearing hosts of Expedition 70, Andy, Satoshi, Laurel, and Hardy, Koldia, Kostya, and Nostoyashi Pasmanas, Aleg. Thank you for all you did for us. We couldn't have done it without you. Laurel, I'm sorry, and Jaws and Laurel, there is some peanut butter waiting for you in the uh, airlock entrance on the forward side. Enjoy. You just heard some nice words between the teams here on the ground and the Axiom Mission 3 crew currently on their way home. Dragon, a couple of other reminders. You are go for suit DOS per 4.012. Ground is going to take the cameras external shortly. And uh, feel free to call us if you need a conference or just if you want to show us the view at the window. We just heard confirmation that the crew can begin removing their suits for their journey home and help them get a little bit more comfortable. It'll be a long journey for a splashdown on Friday, February 9th. The Dragon vehicle is now a little more than 250 meters away from the space station and continuing station to Houston track on the further. Big loop. Dragon Freedom has exited the keep-out sphere. Safe travels, Axiom 3. And we just heard confirmation that Dragon has exited the keep-out sphere. The keep-out sphere is an imaginary sphere that is 200 meters in radius around the space station. The keep-out sphere is one of several safety zones set up to govern visiting spacecraft, either arriving or departing the station. Before moving into the keep-out sphere, spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross the imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering. The next milestone for Dragon will be to exit the Approach Ellipsoid, or AE, which is in another imaginary shape, this time a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers in the same family as the Keepout Sphere. One of the key differences with the Approach Ellipsoid is that vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. This means that the spacecraft would not cross into the Approach Ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering. The crew is now working to doff or remove their spacesuits, and teams on the ground are still in integrated operations. And we will be in integrated operations until the Axiom Mission 3 crew aboard the Dragon Freedom spacecraft exit the approach ellipsoid. This approach ellipsoid exit is currently scheduled for 8.39 a.m. Central, 6.39 a.m. East or Pacific. SpaceX Freedom, come check on the cabin mic. And Dragon, we have you loud and clear on the cabin mic. Sorry, sir, I should have mentioned this is on Dragon to ground. You're loud and clear as well. And we have you loud and clear on Dragon to ground. Everything is continuing to look good for the crew returning home on the Crew Dragon Freedom. They are a little more than 400 meters away from the space station. Teams on the ground will continue to monitor weather ahead of splashdown on Friday, February 9th off the coast of Florida. There will be a couple more departure burns and phasing burns following the exit of the approach ellipsoid to set up for the correct phasing and location for splashdown. 
If you're just joining us, the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft for the Axiom 3 mission that launched atop a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on January 18th and docked to the International Space Station on January 20th, just undocked from the station and had a successful initial departure burns, and the crew has spent about 18 days in space working on over 30 experiments and are bringing more than 550 pounds of science and hardware back to Earth. This is the third private astronaut mission to the space station. While we wait for the approach ellipsoid exit coming up in a few minutes, we're gonna toss it back to Hawthorne to check in. Thanks, Anna. It's exciting that the AX3 crew is now making their way back down to planet Earth. As we mentioned earlier, Dragon is fully autonomous, which means it's capable of flying itself. Development of Crew Dragon started with Cargo Dragon. Dragon was designed from the beginning for flying humans to space, so much so that the first Cargo Dragon had a window. Before we could fly humans, our teams implement, implemented a number of design upgrades to make sure both Dragon and Falcon 9 are suitable for flying people, and then put both vehicles through thousands of tests to prove their safety. Today, SpaceX has successfully completed 44 flights of Dragon to and from orbit since 2010, including 39 trips to the space station. This is the third flight for this Dragon. It first flew on NASA's Crew-4 mission in April 2022. As the first to fly in this capsule, they had the honor of naming it, which is pretty cool because once you name a spacecraft, it will continue to go by that name for all future flights. They chose the name Freedom, Crew 4 Commander Chell Lindgren said that the name was chosen because it celebrates a fundamental human right and the industry and innovation that emanate the unencumbered human spirit. The name also honors Freedom 7, the space capsule used by Alan Shepard's Mercury Redstone 3, the first U.S. human spaceflight mission on May 5, 1961. And in May 2023, the AX2 crew, commanded by Peggy Whitson, flew the second flight of this Dragon capsule. With this mission, AX-3 is SpaceX's 12th human spaceflight mission, and NASA's Crew-8 mission is just around the corner. That's right, Jesse. You know, I, one of the things I love about what you just mentioned was the name of this capsule, Freedom, and I think it's very fitting for this mission. Um, you know, missions like this are very important, not just for the crew members who fly, but for the host of scientists and engineers around the world who had an opportunity to have their research or their technology tested in microgravity. And for Axiom Space, this really is at the heart of why we do these missions. We are building opportunities for others to advance what is possible and expand what is known. So for MLA, Walter, Alper, and Marcus, this has been an incredibly successful mission. You know, this crew conducted a total of 54 research-associated activities around the mission, 36 of which of these were on orbit experiments or tech demos. We had seven life science projects, 23 human research projects, two plant projects, the list goes on. And additional time was focused even on the maintenance of some research equipment. So here are some highlights from their time on board the International Space Station to share with you. So first, Freedom docked on January 20th, and you can see there the crew just looking excited, looking through the hatch. And once they were greeted by the crew for their welcoming ceremony of the Expedition 70 crew, they pretty much got right to work after that. They had a very, very busy schedule set up. Um, not just for media outreach events that you can see um, with Alper and Walter and Marcus Space doing that time. Dragon on Dragon to Ground. We have deployed the flutter camera, and if you route it, you can get a nice look at the ISS. But you could also see... In SpaceX copies flutter camera, and we could see the ISS. We'll uh, give that a shot as we get some time. All in all, this crew was extremely busy with media outreach events, a significant number of research events, some of which you saw there on the recap. Um, but all in all, when it was time to come home, the crew had said goodbye to Expedition 70 and got ready for their undocking mission today. And that's really the start of their journey home. So for more details on the incredible work performed by this crew on orbit, check out the axiomspace.com slash AX3 research. We're getting close to the beginning of the undocking sequence, so let's go ahead and head back to Anna at Johnson Space Center to step through these next moments. Anna? Thanks, John. Yeah, we're continuing to stand by for the approach ellipsoid exit. That should take place in about four minutes from now at 8.39 a.m. Central, 6.39 a.m. Pacific time. The automatic undocking command was sent earlier this morning at 8.15 a.m. Central, 6.15 a.m. Pacific. 
This undocking sequence allowed the umbilicals to retract as well as the 12 hooks to retract and then there were a couple of short thruster firings to physically separate Dragon from the space station. The separation was confirmed at 8.20 a.m. Central, 6.20 a.m. Pacific as the International Space Station and Dragon Freedom Vehicle were flying over the South Pacific Ocean west of Ecuador. We are continuing to stand by for Dragon Freedom's exit of the approach ellipsoid or AE. The approach ellipsoid is in imaginary shape. It's a three-dimensional ellipsoid that measures four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers and is in the same family as the keep out sphere. One of the key differences with the approach ellipsoid and the keep out sphere is that for the approach ellipsoid, vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory. This means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all the new green. Following the keep out sphere exit a few moments ago, the crew aboard the Dragon Freedom spacecraft began to take off their suits and get comfortable for their journey home. The vehicle is now about 820 meters away from the space station. As we continue to stand by for confirmation of approach ellipsoid exit in about two minutes, the team here in Mission Control